It's the SeaWorld Splash Podcast, bringing you the latest news, rumors, and history from the SeaWorld parks in Orlando, San Antonio, and San Diego. And now, here are your hosts, Joseph and Sheldon. Welcome to the SeaWorld Splash Podcast. I'm your host, Joseph, along with Sheldon. What's going on, everybody? And yes, we know it's been a while since you've heard us. Where have we been? Well, we've been busy. We've been out in the field collecting information for this episode and things have just been tight with the orca breeding program since we haven't had blue world we haven't been able to cover as much but we have some really big news so let's put on those ponchos and get ready to be drenched so from sheldon's neck of the woods what do we have well we got a lot of updates today as some of you probably have heard Bill Command did fall very, very ill lately, but with plenty of care and treatment, there's some really good news if you haven't seen lately. He's been performing regularly along with his daughter Malia in one ocean shows and a few lap nights this past year. So it's a really good improvement. Unfortunately, I was not able to see him before, but I was able to see him in person. He was doing a lot better. He was doing slide ups, bows, and trying with trainers, playing with toys, and he's looking really, really good. And well, thanks to SeaWorld team, he's improving, and I think he's going to make a pretty good recovery. As I said, we don't know exactly what's going to happen in the future, but for now, very good results. We also heard that Mako opened over there. Yes, yes, I personally went on a recent trip and saw Mako, and let's say that bad boy is very tall. And I'm a tall person, so you know. It's a very tall, very fast. I uh, haven't known it yet too long of a line and unfortunately bad weather so couldn't quite make that one but from the sky tower it was pretty tall it's bigger than Manta and Orlando bigger than Kraken it's really fast my friends told me really fun great inversion great speed and overall a very cool coaster so I'll probably be on my next trip give it a test run see what happens on that but pretty cool otherwise like the blue and a good time and also SeaWorld also released a Mako soundtrack on there, so if you're interested in it growing like the music, you can go on iTunes and find the music and download it. It's pretty good. Give it, give it a check out. I think I'll have to give Mako a try. And I've checked out their soundtrack. I haven't listened to it fully because I have not downloaded it, but I probably will. As well as probably download this episode of our podcast. As I always download Put every episode. Put on. Let's see, and as well, we also had a moment in San Diego where they lost a member of their family, uh, Bubble the pilot whale, who was 54 years old. She lived longer than most pilot whales do in the wild, which is 45, so she surpassed wild pilot whales. So, thank you to SeaWorld for giving her a chance at life and also thank you Bubbles for inspiring guests um what is your favorite memory of Bubbles that you saw on video uh for me I would definitely say my favorite moment is when she did the storm segments back to Blue Horizons I mean she did a really good water work she was really cool really big and powerful she used her flukes Flashing crowd, doing the, doing the, um, the uh, stand on to the surf. It was really cool. Of course, I never met in person. I have seen the pilot in Florida, but she was one of the pilots I really wanted to see in San Diego. Fortunately, I get to see her, but I know she was in very good life. And from what I saw, she was well taken care of. And she was really, she was really definitely, in my opinion, a really good ambassador for her species. A really good demonstration of how much work is put in what puts into its air animals and its care even when they get older as in with bubbles when she got older they still you know provide excellent care she was in good hands it was you know it's something she can never get in the wild but i would definitely say my favorite moment was seeing her actually on the view of the her um blue rises gone so it's definitely that one for sure we also had a Pygmy killer whale in Florida that was 
uh, rescued. It was Florida, right? I forget. Was it Florida? That is correct. It was Florida, the Sea Rescue Center. Um, yes, as many of you guys might not know, pygmy killer whales are a very rare cetacean. There are not very many seen in the wild, and not and none seen in captivity. This one washed up and was very sick, unfortunately. So probably the leading cause of death is why it's strange. And, <clears throat> however, the SEAL team did a good job of rescuing and trying to really re re rehabilitate her, but unfortunately she did pass away. But, in the long run, it well, just does give you an inside look on, you know, a rare species, you know, you don't normally see every time. It's unfortunate, but an interesting find just the same. Yes, and, uh, more San Diego news. Uh, Kasaka, we found out, has the same sickness, or has the same illness as Tilikum, uh, but she is making a good recovery. A couple Saturdays ago, I was at the underwater viewing area, and I was playing When One Road Meets Another from Light Up the Night, and I witnessed Nikai, Kasaka, and Makani, well, mainly Nikai and Kasaka, come over and just hang out and listen to When One Road Meets Another, and Kasaka, without trainer, she took out her tongue and wiggled, which shows me that she's actually recovering pretty remarkably. And, uh, what's your take on her recovery? Well, as they say, things can be good and bad days, but I think it's, I think it's going pretty well. I mean, she looks like she's back normal. I mean, from a recent live um, video we had at Zero San Diego during the White Ocean Show, when she performed side by side with Makani and Ulysses, she did look like she was bouncing back. And like I said, all animals, when they get sick, they have their good and their bad days and up and downs. But from what I saw, she did pretty well. Now, you said you had a UV experience. Explain a bit more about that, Joe. So, what else all happened down there? I know you said there's a lot more that happened. What else happened? Like, how'd you feel and what other experiences happened down there? Well, that Saturday, I was meeting up with the with an author. Her name is Corinne Sutherland. Uh, she wrote a book called SeaWorld Absolved. Um, it's about what happened on February 24th, 2010. Uh, you can check out the blog post on that. It's on our website. So basically, when I was waiting for her, I was just at underwater viewing and I was just chilling, waiting for the author, and I decided to do a little test. So I put on When One World Meets Another from Light Up the Night, and next thing I see is Nikai vocalize, and I didn't think that he was going to come over right away, but then he came over slowly, and next thing I know he was right in front of me. He was very alert. I could see his eyes, he was making eye contact, and he was very vocal. And so is, was his mom, Kasaka. They were both very vocal. They responded to the music, which shows me that, in my opinion, we need SeaWorld around. We need to show these guests what these killer whales are and why they are important. And from recent stocks, I've seen uh, that they are lower than last year because we had Blue World in the mind and we had more things about killer whales that don't need to be learned. So uh, what's your take on how low the stocks have been lately? Well unfortunately it's been a drop, a significant drop and I have to say it's a response to the new changes. Um, our CEO has made, as you know, with our new Killer Whale show coming in there, phasing out all theological shows, and a lot of people definitely aren't really a fan of that, and of course with the breeding ban, that too, that's caused dramatic um, drop in the stocks, so I think in my opinion, we're really going backwards in a sense, I mean, things back when I remember growing up were in a whole, totally different way, different direction, 
when you know when there's a different form of management. I mean, personally, I think this is a response to our CEO's decision and what they're going to do in phasing out killer whales altogether in captivity. I think that's the main reason our stocks are dropping because people are starting to re- you know people don't like the change. I just say if it ain't broke, don't try to fix it. <laughs> you know, or if you're going to try to make something better, let's think more outside the box as in. I think more realistically instead of what someone else might say wants you to have or pressure you to have, which really isn't going to be the best for everyone, especially for the animals as well. That's my take on it so far. Yeah, I have the same feeling. And then San Diego also got the green light for Ocean Explorer from the Coastal Commission, which Coastal Commission is in charge of everything that goes on with SeaWorld San Diego since SeaWorld San Diego rents their land so they got the green light for that but the thing that I still don't like about Coastal Commission is that they did not give them the green they gave them the green light for Blue World but they said they needed to get rid of the killer whale breeding so basically they were listening to the activists and in my opinion and and uh other people's opinion that I've seen that Blue World should have been started in Florida. I know that other people have said this. Uh, what's your take on that? Well, the Blue World Project, regardless, in Florida, it should be everywhere. You know, these animals in our care, and we're giving them the best possible life possible in captivity, which we do. But shoot, Blue World was the answer. Taking it away, honestly, is a very, in my opinion, foolish decision. You know, I've been seeing lately all these new elephant expansions and all these zoos, all these new habitat expansions, all the world, many different species that would be protected. They are in danger. Ones I'm seeing every day. I don't see why a killer should not get the expansion, you know. I don't see why they should be denied that right, too. But once again, our CEO has made the decision to not go over the Blue Oak Project. If it is the last generation of killers in captivity, then let's at least, in my opinion, give them, you know, the habitat they deserve and should not be denied for. I mean, San Diego, yes, there's 11 whales. We still have plenty of room, but, you know, a Blue Oak project wouldn't hurt. And Tilligan and the other whales in Orlando definitely would benefit from a Blue World project expansion. We have the space. We had everything ready. It's just, unfortunately, some decisions were made that were out of our control. But in my opinion, not having Blue World is, in my opinion, a very foolish decision. I think it's almost a little selfish, in my opinion. I feel it's a bit selfish. But that's my opinion. We should have kept it. We should have done it. And we, if we had it, we were really at least almost nearly halfway done by now. And who knows what else we could connections we could make with Blue World Project. We could... This could be just the beginning of the habitat expansion and education. This could be, this could have been a whole new turn of events, something breathtaking, like, you know, once in a lifetime situation. You know, we're privileged that these animals in captivity. We're learning a lot from them. Building something like this would be like giving the greatest opportunity possible to learn as much as we can about them, perhaps unlock secrets you can never really encounter in the wild, maybe entirely new things you never even knew. But that's my personal opinion about that. Blue World Project should have stayed, taking it away. Shame on all of y'all. It's not a good idea. And I know that we've talked a bit behind the scenes. Um, what about the breeding? You said that you feel like the breeding has, like, you feel like their right to breed has been taken away. Well, yes, Joseph. I think any animal, any species, should never be denied the right to breed. I, I mean, take an example. The scimitar horned oryx went extinct in the wild because of overhunting. Because of zoos around the world, we released the scimitar horned oryx back into the wild from a population that was less than 100. Think of any of the species that were seen. Giant pandas, tigers, elephants. Black rhinos, the northern white rhino. We think about that. There's many species that have been saved because of that. You can take away that breed. Well, guess what? You're just 
you know, you're just further declining a species. Every animal breeds. That's just naturally what they do. If an animal's happy in captivity, it's going to breed. Say it, but putting birth control pills on them, you know, it could have dire consequences. It could affect something that you're not supposed to tamper with. We can't play God in a sense. We can't just say, no, you can't breed. I know it's just, it doesn't make any sense. Every animal breeds. You take that away from them, you know, you could, you could be asking for trouble. And plus, how, a lot of animals, they're in families. These orcas have their families in captivity. If you cut off the family, what's gonna happen when you're down to one or two orcas? You know, they, they need that social, you know, to continue the generations, you know? Look at Amaya. She'll, she'll never know what it is to be a mother. Or, or Kamei, or Sakari, or Malia, and Nealon. They won't know what it's like to have that motherhood, you know? Any animal in captivity should never be denied that right. We save species from the brink of extinction. I mean, my home, I'm in Florida, the American alligator. It was, in, well, there was a time when these suckers, believe it or not, were really endangered in Florida. They were rare because of captive breeding. Boom, they're in the millions. There's a lot of things you guys we need to consider. Taking away breeding, okay. What are the consequences, you know? As, as, as they say in the movies, nature finds a way. You can't force things to not breed. Eventually, something's gonna happen, or something's gonna give, or snap. And it's not gonna be good. In the end, it's all gonna backfire when you're down to like one or two animals by themselves. Then you're gonna be back at the square one root of, oh, now they're alone, says many uneducated people. But personally, it's, it's, a, it's a, once again a fool's decision. It doesn't make any sense. What was your take on it, Joseph? I'm not happy about it one bit. Basically, like you said, we're gonna end up back at the beginning where we had one killer whale in a facility and basically it's gonna be another let's go out and get killer whales. No, we're not gonna go back to that. We need to not go back to that. We need to move forward, and breeding is probably gonna be what we got. And basically, we've had so many research projects that we've done, like the killer whale hearing, and let's see, the heart rate study, and the uh, tracking device with Kita that uh, just went on at Laurel Parque. Yeah, that's gonna have an effect. So, yeah, it really affects what out. And, uh, let's see. And I know you guys are all probably wondering where Josh and Commerson. He has released his name. His real name is Spike. So, if you're wondering where Josh and Eli are, they're out in the field doing research. But, they will be back in a later episode. Uh, hopefully Eli's computer uh, does get fixed. He's having technical difficulties. So yeah. Um, but yeah. I just think that we should have kept the killer whale breeding program because that was something that guests are wanting because they actually are inspired by killer whales. They want to make a difference. I had a family next to me when I was down at the underwater viewing area say thank you to me for actually getting Nikai, Saka, and Makani over because their kids would never have been able to see a killer whale out in the wild if it wasn't for me getting Nikai, Saka, and Makani over. So, yeah. I think we need to reevaluate and hear out the guests. Hear what the guests want. That's my take on everything. We also heard that you went to see Light Up the Night uh, on your trip. How was that? Did you? It was your first time seeing Light Up the Night. What was that like for you? Well, <laughs> I must say. 
definitely a really entertaining show. It was my, like I said, my first time ever seeing Live the Night. Yes, I know. It was a very interesting experience. I went to go see it with a few other members of the Pod Squad and my good friend Tamar, who works there as well. Um, we were hoping to see Tilly come in it because there was a rumor he was going to be in it, but um, sadly he didn't perform. However, he was interacting in the back pool um, before the show, so it was okay. But yeah, I remember it. It was very interesting. Um, it was Elena, Imani, Malia, and Kyle. That's five, as it's sometimes called. It, it was a great stuff show. It was really cool, really energized. Love the DJ. He was very um, interactive. Of course, dance the ages. Dance of the excuse me, dance of the ages. Excuse me. It was a very um, fun little skit to do in the pre-show. It's definitely come a long way from Shimmy Rocks or Shimmy Rocks America. Yes, way back in the day for some of you don't remember those shows. <laughs> But I like that. I love the power sports, the music, I love the lights, the really good laugh tonight. Um, I got to see, you know, my favorite whales performing. And they really had fun. And you can tell the trainers really enjoyed the show. And I am ashamed it's going to be leaving um, our Sea World Parks. I, I do like that show a lot. You know, it's got really great potential. And I'm not going to lie, there's some parts where they have waterworks in it. Man, it would be awesome. <laughs> some hydros and rocket hops that really fit some of the segments, but it was really cool. I really enjoyed it. Definitely gonna go back and see it um, again. Probably coming up this next summer. I get some chance um, off school for sure. And since we're on that subject, if you guys have not seen Light Up the Night in San Diego, no chance to see it because after October, it's on in San Diego. So catch Light Up the Night in San Diego. Because you have until October, folks. Until October. Then it's gone because of their new educational show, which we will be keeping our ears open and listening out for what comes with this new Orca show. But yeah, uh, check out Light Up the Night and Miracles in San Diego before they are gone, because once they're gone, they're gone. But yeah. <laughs> but then you have Orlando and San Antonio. So, but check them out in San Diego because San Diego still needs the support. So, uh, anything else? <laughs> yes. yes. So, uh, anything else before we wrap this up? Any special uh, spotlights? Well, as you know, Takara is having the last um, calf. Um, I, if you guys have any ideas or name ideas, we're just curious to see. If it would be any boy names or girl names, shoot us a, you know, comment or a shout out and we'll see what we got. Just curious to see what you guys would name it. But otherwise, everybody else have a very good, blessed day. Enjoy the rest of your day wherever you are. And thanks for listening in. We appreciate your patience with us. We apologize for the being missing in action and going ghosts. A lot of things going on lately. But, yeah. And from all of us here on the Zero Splash Team, we thank you for joining us. And we hope... You join us for the next amazing podcast to come. Splash you later. And we promise... <laughs> and we promise to be back with more episodes. So, keep watching out for more exciting episodes. Splash you later, everyone. Take care, guys. Remember, if you want to share any of your favorite SeaWorld stories or memories, please call or text the SeaWorld Splash Team, 407-900-5309. Once again, that number is 407-900-5309. Or email us at SeaWorldSplashTeam at gmail.com. Thank you, and splash you later.